This is a Coin 6 News breaking news alert. Hey, welcome to Coin 6 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Emily Burris. We are keeping an eye on winter weather as snow and ice may be making its way across the metro area tonight. We have team coverage. Our Jennifer Dowling is standing by live near I-84 on the way out to the gorge where driving conditions could get dicey overnight. We're going to hear more from her in just a minute. But first, let's go right to meteorologist Joseph Dames. He's been tracking this for us all evening. Joseph, what are we expecting here? I know we're keeping an eye on the gorge, but what's the timing of all this looking like now? Well, as we start going through the next two to three hours, we're finally starting to notice that moisture move in from the south of the valley up to the north. We've had some reports of a little bit of freezing rain down towards Eugene, some of the higher elevations there too. And the county seeing a little bit of light snow. You can see this patch of moisture now to the south of us. It's going to make its way to the north. Uh, some of it is being overdone a bit. Not all of this is reaching the surface. It's also running into some drier air. But as it does reach to the north, we might see some of that as we approach about midnight here in Portland and parts of the gorge. Current temperatures right by Portland. 40 degrees, but down to the south for Eugene and Corvallis right now at 33 and there for the Oregon coast in the lower 40s. Here you go. Watch the forecast as we go to about midnight there. Still pushing that moisture in. It's going to be areas of the gorge where I'm still keeping my eye on, especially Cascade Locks to the east. And we start to dry up as we head into uh, parts of our Sunday afternoon. So I'm leaving a chance for some leftover rain as we go through tomorrow morning. Where we're going to see the chance for a little bit of ice and snow. I'll get to all those details coming up in a few minutes. We'll kind of go from one location to the next, and I'll get that forecast for you in about 10 minutes. All right, Joseph, thanks. Well, winter weather preparations are underway to make sure drivers don't get stuck in a dangerous situation. The Oregon Department of Transportation has crews on standby ready to go to any areas that see snow and ice into tonight and tomorrow morning. Coin 6's Jennifer Dowling is live in Troutdale tonight, keeping an eye on conditions right now on I-84. Jen? Good evening, Emily. Yes, conditions out here are very windy and very cold, but the good news is right now it's dry. However, you never know what's going to happen with gorge weather, so that's why road crews tell us they're going to monitor it all night. Uh, we live in the gorge in Carson, so we're supposed to get hit pretty hard tonight, I think, um, but we'll see. Some Oregon residents are expecting the best, but preparing for the worst. Definitely ice makes me the most nervous, black ice. The uh, other vehicle has the stud tires on it. We've got our parkas and everything, so. Earlier this evening, the weather was stirring up trouble for those working outside. I feel like I'm being bullied by the wind. Matthew Hoover tried his best to fight it. I've um, got layers and layers and layers. Um, pretty much warm except for right here. If the snow or freezing rain does hit Oregon's highways, road crews are on standby. Salt is a really important tool for us, particularly in a few uh, spots. Certainly uh, Sylvan, Highway 26 going up out of the tunnel is one of them, and the Breeze Hill, which is that space on I-5 coming uh, north from 217. Those are two spots that have had a lot of problems in the past. We're going to be watching them very carefully. Spokesperson Don Hamilton says they've been keeping an eye on I-5 outside of Eugene and Corvallis. They'll also be monitoring the gorge. The gorge is sort of its own weather system, so anything can happen out there, and we're ready for anything that's going to go on. We have our first storage shed for salt in the Portland area is in Cascade Locks, so we'll be able to move salt in all through the gorge very quickly and very easily if something comes up uh, in the next couple of days or at any point this winter. Will and Nate Clark say they already got a foot of snow in Parkdale. It wasn't bad. Bad. Yeah, we're pretty used to it. So, although Will tells us he did have to stomp out a path for the family's chickens, oh, and I used my boots. Folks we talked to say they'll make the best of what comes their way. Oh, I I love snow. I love it. Uh, it's not fun to work in, but it's fun to play in. And that salt shed that went up in Cascade Locks for the Oregon Department of Transportation uh, went up this fall. They just stocked it up the, over the past two weeks. So they tell me that they can tend to not only areas of the gorge, but to areas of the metro Portland area as well, should things get snowy or icy. Emily, back to you. All right, Jennifer, thanks. Yeah, we'll see how that works this season. Well, we are following some breaking news right now on I-84. This just in from near the Cascade Locks. We've learned a man is dead after police say he walked into one of the 
the westbound lanes. We've learned that man is 32 year old Kevin Burrow Ellenberg from Boise. Right now, traffic is down to one lane while police are investigating this scene. Again, this on 84 westbound near Cascade Locks. No word from investigators on if this has anything to do with weather conditions in the area, but of course, if weather makes travel dicey, this road blockage is going to add to that. We're going to stay on this scene and keep you updated as we learn more. Well, as we continue to watch that, we're watching some of the other roads in the area. Here's a live look right now at Highway 26 near Government Camp. You can see snow covering the shoulders and more is on the way. Again, if you're headed through the gorge or up to the mountain this evening or early tomorrow morning, Drive with a little extra caution over the next couple of days. Well, this Arctic blast isn't just being felt here in the Northwest. Tonight, nearly the entire country is feeling the impact of a historic storm. Blizzard like conditions hammered parts of South Dakota where at least one person has died. Tonight, 70 million Americans are under weather alerts from California to Maine. Dania Bacchus reports. After a powerful storm dumped rain and snow across the West. They were telling us for a week we were going to get it and we got it. Another is expected this weekend as millions of holiday travelers make their way back home. The rain was going horizontal and you could hardly see there's the visibility was really, really bad. In Arizona, the National Weather Service says three tornadoes ripped through the Phoenix area Friday, leaving behind a path of debris and destruction. Northeast of Phoenix, two children are dead, one other missing after a family vehicle was swept away by floodwaters. Wind gusts of up to 90 miles per hour caused whiteout conditions in parts of Colorado. And in Utah, it was dumping about an inch an hour right now. Snow plow truck drivers were working around to clear roads. California saw up to four feet of snow in some areas. We saw when we got to Sacramento, our ETA kept going up and up. The weather snarling traffic and causing gridlock for those hoping to beat the holiday rush back home. Forecasters say Friday was the literal calm before the storm. In Northern California, rain and snow has started and is expected to not let up until Tuesday. Donya Back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, now is a great time to download our PDX weather app. You can get the very latest updates on snow, freezing temperatures, and your driving conditions from Joseph and the rest of our weather team anytime in the palm of your hand. You can download that app from the Apple Store or Google Play. And a Loa woman is behind bars tonight after holding an entire party at gunpoint early this morning and stealing their cell phones. Washington County Sheriff's deputies identified 20-year-old Maria Guerrero and found her at a home a few miles away. She's charged with robbery and unlawful use of a weapon. Sandy police need your help finding a missing and possibly endangered man. 68 year old Martin Wells hasn't been seen or heard from since November 13th. Police say he suffers from a mental health issue and could be in crisis. If you see him or know where he is, call police immediately. Three people are dead, two others in serious condition after a crash in Marion County last night. It happened on Cordon Road Northeast near Sunnyview, just outside of Salem. Sheriff's deputies say a pickup truck and a passenger van with 13 people inside crashed. Three people in that van were killed at the scene. Two others were rushed to the hospital. One passenger from the truck was also taken to a hospital. Officials have not yet released the identity of those killed or said what led up to this crash. Rangers at Crater Lake are looking for a driver who went off the road at the National Park, causing some substantial damage. The park rangers think the driver went off roading last Saturday or early last Sunday. The vehicle damaged plants and other resources at the park. Most of the year, Crater Lake is buried under snow, so vegetation doesn't have a much chance to regrow. Rangers say they spend countless hours every year rehabbing property damaged by driving or hiking off trails. People in the Kenton neighborhood rallied today against a test program being run there by the Postal Service. It's called consolidated casing. It's a new approach designed to speed up mail carriers and eliminate routes. But neighbors are complaining their mail has been late or delivered to the wrong home entirely. It's also left some mail carriers scrambling. There's a, just a lot more work than there normally would be, and, and we're trying to do our best, and we want the people that live here in Kenton to understand what's happening so that they can be kind and loving to all the people doing the work here and have an actual direction to 
voice their concerns. We did reach out to the Postal Service for comment. They responded in a statement today saying, in part, consolidated casing is an internal test process we're investigating that has no external customer impact. The program is being tested around 65 different postal codes across the country. Kenton is the only one in the Portland metro area. Well, a day after Black Friday and only about 36 hours from Cyber Monday, local shoppers spent the day supporting Small Business Saturday. Now in its 10th year, the day promotes shopping at locally owned stores to help the local economy grow. That includes the large number of small stores and businesses across the Portland area. I feel like people in Portland are super aware of supporting small businesses and they know that if they want them around and for us to stay in our neighborhoods, um, it's just something to support. Like every time someone buys a book, I feel like they're saying, yay, we want you here. So it yeah. feels good. The Division Clinton Business Association also held its annual Bright Lights, Warm Hearts promotion. That runs through December with different special events and raising money for the area nonprofits. Well, it was close late in the fourth quarter, but in the end, the 14th ranked Ducks able to seal the deal in the 123rd Civil War with a win 24 to 10. The Beavers, who were without starting quarterback Jake Luton due to injury, will now finish their season just one win shy of a bowl game. As for the Ducks, they turn their attention to the Pac-12 championship coming up this Friday. Our A.J. McCord was at Autzen Stadium. We'll have more on this game coming up later in sports. Next on Coin 6 News, it was another successful Black Friday, but in some places, guns were the popular items flying off store shelves. And is it a prank gone wrong? The backlash after an officer receives his Starbucks order labeled with the word pig. More on that still to come on Coin 6 News.